All right, Advent of Code, 2023, day 22. Sand slabs. Enough sand has fallen. It can finally filter water for Snow Island. Well, almost. The sand has been falling as large compacted bricks of sand piling up to form an impressive stack here near the edge of Island Island. In order to make use of the sand to filter water, some of the bricks will need to be broken apart, nay, disintegrated, back into freely flowing sand. Is that um, like a... Oh, look at that. It is a tooltip. Disintegrate. XR. Sorcery. Destroy X targets bricks of sand. They cannot be regenerated. Create 32768-0-1 colorless sand artifact creature tokens for each brick of sand destroyed in this way. Wow. <clears throat> the stack is tall enough that you'll have to be careful about choosing which bricks to disintegrate. If you disintegrate the wrong brick, large portions of the stack could topple, which sounds pretty dangerous. The elves responsible for water filtering operations took a snapshot of the bricks while they were still falling, your puzzle input, which should let you work out which bricks are safe to disintegrate. For example, test input, which we will grab right now, because this sounds like it's going to be a tough one. Test input. There we go. Each line of text in the snapshot represents the position of a single brick at the time the snapshot was taken. The position, position is given as two XYZ coordinates, one for each end of the brick, separated by a tilde. Each brick is made up of a single straight line of cubes. Single straight line of cubes. And the elves were even careful to choose a time for the snapshot that had all of the free-falling bricks at integer positions above the ground. That was very convenient of them. So the whole snapshot is aligned to a three-dimensional cube grid. A line like 222 tilde 222 means that both ends of the brick are at the same coordinate. In other words, the brick is a single cube. Okay. Lines like 0010 tilde 1010 or 0010 tilde 0110 both represent bricks that are two cubes in volume, both oriented horizontally. Okay. I think I understand how cubes work. The ground is at z equals zero and is perfectly flat. The lowest z value a brick can have, therefore, is one. So five five one five six one or two zero two one zero two five are both resting on the ground because yeah, one of the z coordinates is a one. Got it. But three three two and three 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 was above the ground at the time of the snapshot. Before because the snapshot was taken while the bricks were still falling, some of the bricks will still be in the air. You'll need to start by figuring out where they will end up. Bricks are magically stabilized, so they never rotate, even in weird situations like where a long horizontal brick is only supported on one end. Two bricks cannot occupy the same position, so a falling brick will come to rest on the first other brick it encounters. That's convenient, too. It's like 3D Tetris, but without rotating. Uh, here's the same example again, this time with each brick given a letter, so it can be marked in diagrams. Time is snapshot. This is what it looks like. You can see A, B, and C, and D, I guess, are on the ground. And E can still fall. And then F can fall on top of E, and then G can fall on top of F. That's the way I'm reading it. Oh, I see. So this is X and Z coordinates. Z is the height. X is this dimension. And then we're looking at the Y dimension here. OK. Once all the bricks fall downward as far as they can go, the stack looks like this where question mark means bricks are hidden behind other bricks at that location. Oh, I see. Well, B and C should be... Okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So D, in this direction, D is covering up E, or the other way around. And this way, B is covering up C, or the other way around. I understand. Now that all the bricks have settled, it becomes easier to tell which bricks are supporting which other bricks. Brick A is the only brick supporting B and C. B is one of two bricks supporting D and E. C is the other brick supporting D and E. So this is like a graph. Okay. So we just build a graph out of the support network. Um, your first task is to figure out which bricks are safe to disintegrate. A brick can be safely disintegrated if, after removing it, no other bricks would fall further directly downward. So as long as there's more than one brick supporting another brick, then you can remove the brick. <laughs> uh, 
Is that right? Don't actually disintegrate any bricks. Just determine what would happen if for each brick, only that brick were disintegrated. Okay, so we don't have to worry about like, well, we can remove all but one or something like that. Bricks can be disintegrated even if they're completely surrounded by other bricks. You can squeeze between bricks if you need to. In this example, the bricks can be disintegrated as follows. A cannot be disintegrated because if it were, B and C would fall. Okay. B can be disintegrated. C can be disintegrated because, D, right, D can be, um, right, E can be, F cannot be because the only one above it is G. I mean, G is the only, F is the only support for G. All right. All right, I think I understand. Um, I don't know how to approach it just yet, but let's build up our template first. That give me time to think. I'm thinking well, we'll create a something ordered by the Z coordinate and then work our way down, right? So we start with the lowest Z. Scoop says, first make your disintegrator, then start shooting. 23, 22, we're almost up to the square day, 23, 23. All right, so I just killed, I just killed this. We, we got, it, you know, each one of these represents 131 out of the 25 million that we need to step. So obviously it's not gonna run in, in any reasonable amount of time. Um, I see, I'm back on 21 again, day 21. Um, and, you know, as we saw from Wolfram Alpha, maybe these are the coefficients that we use somehow. We got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Um, but not right now. Not right now. Right now we're going to create a brick. Struct brick. And it's going to have um, two sets of coordinates, a low set, and a high set. Uh, we're also going to need something that indicates what bricks are supporting what other bricks um, and to, to make our graph. Because here's what I'm thinking. In the example, um, A is supporting B and also, I should give it a little extra line here, and C. B and C both support D and E. I, I don't know if I, how I can draw that because you have D and E and they both go, I guess I could do this or I can do this like that and then show that this crosses over here in that direction. So. B basically goes from here down to E, and C goes this way to up to D. And then brick D supports F. Um, I guess we could do this again. Like this. This is awkwardly drawn. F, and then F supports G. So that's the graph, I think. So you can remove B or C because both of them are supported. That's one, two. You can remove D or E because F is supported by, it would be supported by the other one. And then G can be removed because it's not supporting anything. So the only ones that cannot be removed are um, A and F. Right, and does that match what, yeah, a, F cannot and A cannot, right, okay. Um, so I guess, what's the easiest, oops, forgot the comma. What's the easiest way to represent this? Um, should we have each brick say who it's being supported by? Or should we have each brick list every one of its supportees? Scoop said, I did both. Yeah, I mean, 
it's a directed graph and I think it's acyclic because you can't have, you know, brick, you know, M supporting brick O and brick O sub also supporting brick M. So it's, it's an acyclic graph. Um, I was thinking, is there a way we could do it with just having it a single direction without having the back pointers, right? But let's, let's get the parsing done first and then worry about that part later. Uh, impl from stir for brick. Goodmunk says, I did none. Uh, did, did you solve the problem, Goodmunk, or in, without having to use a, a graph? That would be cool to know. All right, string. So we're going to split on the tilde. Let's get a copy of this thing here. There we go. Let left right equals um, s dot split once on tilde unwrap, and then we can just um, create um, an array, I guess. Code monk says, "Oh yes, I in a really hacky way recursing all the time." Oh okay. Well, you know, whatever solves the problem, right? That, that's the key. Um, I'm going to try to do a graph and see how miserably I fail. Uh, let left equals left dot split comma dot map number number dot parse. Um, should we make these all I64s? Collect. Uh, into a vec like that, and then we do the same thing right. Um, although I made these tuples, okay, you can't collect into a tuple in Rust, <laughs> so we'd have to we have to do it by hand. Um, so this will become okay of brick of low. Oh, you know what? I don't know. Let's take a look at the input. I was just going to say, you know, is, is the one on the left always going to be lower than or less than or equal to the one on the right? And at least for this, these first 20 lines out of the 1,200 that we've, get, we've been given, um, it looks like that is the case. Okay. Um, so I think we can just assume, we can just say left zero, left one, left two, and do the same thing for high. Um, whoops. Colon dot, search for left, and replace it with right. G. There. There's our brick. Scoop says put in insert. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Assert bang. Uh, left zero is less than equal to right zero. Right, and that way we'll know. And it looks like that. Well, we don't know yet. I haven't called the, the uh, parsing stuff yet. So let's do that. Let lines equals AOC lib read lines test input for line in lines. Bricks, back brick. Uh, self bricks in uh, push line parse unwrap. Print lin. Oh, I forgot to debug it. Oops. Um, brick. No, self bricks. There we go. There we go. Scoop says, I don't know, you can make all those assertions. Okay. Um, really? I mean, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Otherwise, I'll have to do like min max on the, on the what's it says. Let's do it for the real input and see what happens. Um, let's do this. Oh. Uh, input uh, 2023 22.txt. No, it worked. It didn't. Uh, it didn't complain. 
Um, we should check the last one that we got the last one. Tell this guy. Yeah. I think we could. Andrea Kaluzidev. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. All right, I, I Scoops, I, I think I think we maybe we got lucky or I got lucky with this input or because I'm just I just want to make sure that left is going to be less than or equal to right. I just want to have all of those in that order so that I can do um, sorting, all right? Because first thing we need to do for part one is oops, to leave the wrong line is sort them um, by their height. Um, so let's pull in a B tree set. We could call it by height. And we can say self bricks hitter. And we should be able to do this in one line. Scoop says, in another case, when I made my solution more in general than I need to be. That, I mean, that's fine. If, if, if... Amaralde, thank you for the follow. If you are um, uh, just taking it as you read it in, and then I, I could have done, like, like I said, you know, made sure that the low is all the minimum minima and the high were all the maxima, then um, I could just do it while I'm parsing it just to guarantee. But if it's already set that way, then we're good. This is just uh, to use debug assert. Okay, uh, you know what I didn't do was do um, X, Y, Z. I just did a tuple. Self bricks iter map brick. Um, and I want to map it to B.2, comma, B.0, B.1. And that way we can collect it into a B tree set, right? Which I'll need to pull in. And then it should be by height. I'm gonna switch, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that. Uh, and we should be able to dump it out. Oh, right. Um, we need to sort it by the low. Right, because we're going to sort it in height order from the bottom of each brick. And then I forgot we actually need to. Um... The reason I'm storing this stuff here, low zero, B, low one, is because I need to collide them, right? B high zero, B high one. So these are all X, Y coordinates. Oh, right. I forgot. I need to keep this unsolved thing here. Okay. All right. So now we have them by height. We should be able to dump those out and see if we got it in the correct order. I think it's actually in that order. Yeah, it's already in that order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, eight. So we have the heights, but the, the, the text file or the input file does not have it in order. So that's why I was doing that. And now we'll drop the first one and then drop all the remaining ones on top of them. Mizzou says they could be vertical too. Yeah, but uh, in that case, the X would be, the X's would be equal, right? Well, vertical means the Z, the, if the X and Y's are equal, the Z's will be, I mean, it could be, right? Because I did less than or equal to. So I, I think we're good. I think we're good. Tommy says, I finished day 20, but I'm out for this year. I don't like the fact that solutions may not be generally valid. Ah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but... You know, I mean, part of Advent of Code is solving the problem you're given, not solving the general case. So sometimes it's doing a hacky solution or just, you know, typing in a Python REPL to get the solution is sufficient. 
All right, so let's drop let's drop a brick. <laughs> uh, let's call let's create a ground. And let's make that a B tree set as well. Because what I can do is sort the ground by the top of each brick. And that way I can find the top, I can search from the top down um looking for a brick to collide with right you know what i also want to store here um is the index of the brick that we're going to be messing with so i want to store that here and that way we, we can get it. So now we'll say while let some brick equals by height pop pop last. No pop first, right? We're gonna start from the from the bottom up. Oh, we can't mutate that. Okay. Um now we're gonna look to see all the bricks that are already on the ground. So we're going to loop over all the ground bricks for G in ground. It's not just G, right? It's going to be the same format here. Um, let's call it, I don't know, the ground. The ground bricks top, the top of the ground brick, the um, X, Y coordinates. So this pair and then the index ground index in this and we can destructure this so this will be the um, falling brick bottom the xy coordinates for the falling brick and the falling brick index we'll call it the ground brick index and now i have to call this the falling brick xy and the ground brick xy okay So if we collide, if these two collide, and we can write a little collider, um, oh, okay, so we don't actually need to store the x, y coordinates. We can just store the index, right? And we can just retrieve it from the brick itself. Let's do that. That, that should simplify the code a little bit, right? Because then I, I can say if self bricks falling brick index come on collides x y with self bricks ground brick index then we then we found the point where we've found a support gb index supports fb index so let's write the little collides x y Generate collides xy method. Let's see what it does. Oh, look at that. It put it right here. And we'll call it other. Um, and then this is this is just you know 2D um, 2D collision. So it'd be uh, self zero. Oh, self. Yeah, so we're, we're just looking at th these four numbers here, right? Self low zero is less than or equal to self uh, other low high. <laughs> I've forgotten how to do 2D collision. And self low, no, other high. low zero less than equal to self no this doesn't yeah self high zero and self low one is less than or equal to other high one and other low one is less than or equal to self high one 
I think this is it. Um, we should probably write a little test. Otherwise, I'm going to not trust myself. Test. Collision. Oops. Um, we have to create a couple of bricks. So let B1 is equal to brick low of, let's say, 0, 0, 0. And high of um, 4, 4, 4. A nice square brick. Cubicle brick, rather. And let B2 is equal to brick uh, low of um, 3, 4, 5. We all didn't care about the X, Y plane. We don't care about the, uh, the Z plane. Um, or the Z dimension. High of um, 8, 9. Right. These are two bricks. Hopefully I got those right. And we should see assert, bang, B1 collides X, Y with B2. Oops, I forgot the... Um, Mismatch closing. Uh, GB index is unknown. Oh, because I haven't set what type this is yet. Okay, so this is a um, GB top is just an I64 and a U size. Right, so this should be a U size now. Oh, reference to a U size. Okay. All right, let's run the test. The test passes. Um, hopefully, I got that right then. And let's let's do one that doesn't uh, collide. No, no collision, just to make sure it's not always returning true. And then five, six, eight, nine should not collide. Yeah, okay, I assume that worked because I don't see any, if I do this, car, hmm? cargo test. Yeah, test collision, test no collision. Okay, now I can see them. Bacon is very helpfully saying, okay, all the tests pass. So you don't actually need to see all the okays, but I just, it felt better to see the okays. <laughs> um, boom, boom, where are we now? All right, so now we know which, whether or not a brick is going to support, um, but it, we don't know all of them. We, had, we still have to loop over all of them as long as we don't have a current brick that's supporting. And this is where things get tricky for me because I it's hard for me to visualize. We're looking at, let, let me pull out Sketchpad. I don't know if I can do this. Can I draw here? I can, but it's very, very bright. Is there a, a way I can get a dark background? Nope, I can't. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just deal with it. Um, so we have a brick and we're trying to drop another brick on top of it. So we want to set the bottom height here to be the top, but they're all integer plus one, right? We want a plus one here. So if this is three at here, I can't draw with my thing. We want to set the bottom of this to four, right? And then the top is whatever the height is. I think that's what we want to do. And that'll give us the new top for the ground information. So, let me turn that off. That's too bright. We're going to say ground insert. And we're going to choose this such that 
it's whatever bri oh we need to know what where the brick is right oh we do we we, we have it here so gb top plus one is going to be the bottom is the bottom of the brick that's colliding the falling brick and then the height of that is going to be is going to represent uh, so we can get height is equal to self bricks fb index of of fb index dot high dot two minus self brick fb index of low dot two plus one right and that's the height and that's what gets put here plus height oh yeah that's a good point Mizzard. i'm iterating over the ground while inserting into it um then we what we have to do is save it zero um what we want to do also is make sure that we now know that this brick on the ground is supporting this guy. So we want to add to our graph. And I can't think of what would be easier to know. Um, I'm glad that he has both examples, both ways of handling things in example. B is supported by A and C is supported by A. Both B and C have a single support of A, and so that means A cannot be removed from the graph. D is supported by C, and D is supported by B, and because D is supported by multiple bricks, then B and C are potentially able to be removed. If C had another thing that was supporting, like H, Right, we could say, well, C potentially could be removed, but there might be another H, but it might be another one. Okay, so maybe what we do is we save the back pointer, right? We save, you know, B is pointing to A and C is pointing to A. Um, and then we can look for everybody's back pointers. And if they have a single brick that's supporting them, then that brick cannot be removed. Right. This has multiple bricks supporting it. This has a single brick supporting it, but it's on the top, right? That was the other thing. Brick G can be disintegrated because it's not supporting anything. So if we looked at everybody supporting G or everybody G supporting it, zero. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um, We'll figure it out. We just need to say, okay, we just landed on top of this uh, this ground brick. We need to keep looking to see what other bricks we've hit. We've reached so we can say let mot uh, supporter. Is a new supporter, and then we can just say supporter push um, gb index. So then when we come out of this, we can say println brick fb index is supported by uh, supporter at height, saved height. But we need to stop, right? Once this... Uh, if GB, oop, if saved height range zero and GB top is less than saved height, break, right? We don't want to search too far. Oops. Like that. Uh, run. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Uh, my collision must not be working properly, but I tested it. 
Therefore, it must be perfect. Um, let's take a look at the loop again. Oh, there's nothing on. All oh, right, I need to actually put something on the ground. So we can say here, if saved height equals zero, I should be using options for that. Otherwise, we'll do this, and then we'll put this on the ground. So ground dot insert, and this is going to be saved height and the brick we're dealing with, the falling bricks index. Um, oh no, no, no. Then it's the falling bricks height, right? Let, right? And so we could put that in here. Otherwise, we do that uh, insert. Come on, ground, insert. Save tight, FB index. I can clean this up, but I just want to get it to work right now. All right, so brick one is supported by zero at height three. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. It should be at height two. Brick this. Uh, FB index is on the ground with a top of height. Brick is zero on, on the ground with the top of one. Yeah, height three looks wrong. It should be two for bricks one and two, although it looks like the collision stuff is working. Um, brick five is supported by zero and three at height seven. Uh oh, but this stuff isn't working because brick two is supported by zero. That's true. Bricks three. I should be printing it out by number because that's A, B, C. So D and E are supported, should both be supported by um, B and C, but I only have it supporting here, and these heights are wrong. Okay, I got so there's a few things to work on. Mizzer says supported by their original position. Um, it's supposed to be supported by the saved height that we calculated here, which is the height of the brick itself. Oh, maybe I'm adding too many ones. But the top of one, these both have tops of two. These both have tops of three. This has a top of four. And then brick six is supported by zero at height three. That's wrong. All right, so our collision detection is, is wrong because G fell all the way through to zero. So we got to fix that. Um, and also B and C aren't, aren't detecting collision. Okay, so my collision's all wrong. Let's use this as sample input for our collision detector. Um, Test bricks. So we have, um, let's, yeah, let me copy paste all this into here. And I can get rid of the, the Z coordinates. This will be, this is going to be a little awkward. Let's see if I can do this in a smarter way here. Let's do this. that um, CF tilde where's the tilde there it is close bracket comma open bracket and then this 
uh, becomes like that. Come here. Um, we now need to put these in brackets. And these in brackets. Oops. Like that. Yeah. And for oh, let list equals this. Okay. And now I can say, oh, and then we need, uh, after all that, we need to know what collides with what. Um, we know that uh, B and C collide. Okay. So we can do that. Um, if only there were a better way to do this collision thing. Where's my collision code? Yeah, I'm just collating the bricks. Okay. Let's start again. Sorry, folks. So, so we're going to make um, uh, this is going to be low colon open paren. And this is going to be close paren comma high colon open paren and get rid of the tildes and then we'll do that comma oops and then each one of these is a brick let's go Call it a brick. Should have done that as a vertical thing, and then we can close these out, right? And then this will be B, C, D, E, E, F, G. Yeah, now I'm going to get yelled at. And if I, okay. All right. Um, and now we can say assert BA collides with BB and C, right? We know that. Um, we also know that D and E collide with B and C. D collides with BB. Oh, we can just do this. Like this. D, D, E, E. We know that F collides with D and E, BF collides with BD and E, and then F collides, yeah, collides with BG. So hopefully, oh, collides XY. Um, with x, y. How's that? T. Those tests all pass. Okay. So that means that I'm doing something wrong here. It's it's falling. Safe height is greater than zero, and GB top is less than safe height. Then stop. All right. I guess we have to print out some more information here because brick six is falling too far. And then bricks three and four are not seeing the other supporters. One is supported by two, uh, zero, two is supported by zero, three is supported by one and two. 
And that's what this loop was supposed to detect. Control V for rectangle select, Shift I to insert text. Wouldn't the, the Shift I insert just at the beginning? If I hit Shift I now, will that replace the whole thing? Yeah. So can I can I use change instead of? No. Shift C blows the whole thing away. Um, regular C? No, oh, okay. Regular C would would have worked. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mizzard. That's a, that's a nice shortcut. I appreciate that. Um, so we can say println checking oh, FB index hits GB index. Close quotes. One hit zero, two hit zero, three hits one, four hits one. Five hits zero. Okay, that's a bug. Five hits three and six hits zero. Um, it shouldn't even be checking zero because zero is lower. Oh, I see. So the B tree sets backwards for me. Right. It's this is searching from the bottom up. I need to um, invert this ground iter rev. All right. I think we're getting closer. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer. The Blinden. Thank you for the follow. Oh wow, it's been an hour and I still haven't finished part one. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to loop back to part um, to day 21 at this point. All right, so one hits zero, two hits zero, three hits two, four, two, five hits four. Five is uh, F in our in our fancy language here. Curie Hart says, hi, what program are you using to run your test? The default cargo test doesn't show print. Um, it will show print if the test fails. Um, and that's the only time you care. Well, that's the only time you should care about what's coming out of the of your test is what, if the test fails. Um, I use test, but I'm running test inside Bacon, so I'll also see any compilation errors or warnings here as well. Oh, Mizzard, Mizzard points out you can do cargo test dash dash space dash dash no capture and you'll see all your output. No capture should show print inside the tested function as well, Cherry Heart. Any, any output that comes out should not be captured uh, with the no capture flag. Okay. So we, we fixed the bug where things were falling too far. But now we don't we have a bug zero zero two two brick five is supported by four f is supported by e but also supported by d so why is that not showing up uh printlin checking fb index falling towards gb index is it even checking it checking five tor falling towards four and it hit it five hits four and then before we can get to the next one it should be also checking brick three but it's not Maybe that's another bug. 
Is beach reset ordering by the Z axis? It should be ordering by the um by the first part of the tuple first. Six is greater than zero and three is less than six. Oh. My oh my saved height is wrong. Oh, we need to save the bottom. We need uh, we need to save the new bottom. Um let my current bottom. Um, and the current bottom is going to be um, low two um, uh, current bottom equals this minus the distance between the height and the bottom, right? <laughs> uh, right, if, if we are at, if our current height is, let's say this is 17. This is the, the top of the brick that's falling. And here we have 23, which is the bottom of the brick that's falling. This is the ground, top of ground. And this is the bottom of falling brick. Our new bottom, 23, has to be Yeah, it's got to be. Oh, this is the, this is the height of the new one, right? So the current bottom is going to be the saved height. It's going to be the, this. Maybe this is it. No. Plush Karuna says, does this require knowledge of advanced algorithms or am I stupid? Um, you uh it just does not require knowledge of advanced algorithms this is just this is just me flailing wildly Mizzard says you have to check gb top with less than safe height You're right i do and safe height is updated in loop uh yeah except i'm cheating because it should be exactly the same each time oh this is this yeah this is the safe height of the highest brick there and they bricks could have different heights. So we should really be saving the max here. No, no, this is the, this is the saved height of the falling brick, right? It's and, and that doesn't change through the loop. The falling brick is the same thing through the loop. Um, but what I want to do is make the bottom of the brick, which is self low 23. We want to get the difference here and subtract that. But I don't know what the top of the ground is. Should be GP top. Oh, it's GB top of the, uh, yeah, so current bottom should be GB top, right? There we go. I think this will do it. Yeah, okay, I, I'm seeing stuff now. So brick three is supported by two and one, four is supported by two and one, which is correct, right? E and D are supported by B and C. And then F is supported by E and D, four and three, and brick six is supported by five. Okay, I think we, we figured out the supporting situation here. We don't need that. Will that clean things up? Now we can get rid of this thing too. Yeah, okay, so now we can see it, the, the basics. What does zero, one, two in the first line mean in each of the... Where's zero and two? Are these numbers here? Yeah, like Mr. says, the it's the x coordinate of 
oh of the uh okay there's a 3d let me let me pull this up and see what this looks like copy link address ah yes yeah so this is brick a b and c d and e f and then g so that all we're trying to do is figure out what can be removed and we can remove b because the magic keeps these two blocks up we can remove c because this supports these guys and we can remove. okay so now we got to figure out now that we have all of this information this wonderful information how do we figure out which ones are safe safe to remove um brick one is supported by only one thing so that one thing cannot be removed brick three is supported by two things so they both have the potential to be removable. So do we just go through each one of these things and look at the supporter vectors, right? I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing it away each time through the loop, but it's because I was just trying to get it, get the information. But once we have all that information, we need to save that and then we can loop through here and any brick that is supported by a single brick that single brick cannot be removed so zero cannot be removed and five cannot be removed but all the others can be is that so is that the correct answer there's one two three four five six seven and there's two that cannot be removed what's the actual answer is it five Yes, five. Okay. So what we can do is save all the ones that cannot be removed. Um, well, how about this? Let mutt remove removable <laughs> equals uh, zero dot dot bricks len self brick len um iter collect hash set it's unknown well i'll give it a type and then we'll i'll let russ tell me what i got wrong here oh that's why it's unknown we can't iterate over that. Is it already an iterable? It is. Okay. Can I remove this now? Yes. Okay. So now what we do is we say if supporter len is equal to one, then removable dot remove supporter of zero. How's that? And then for the answer, we say removable.len. Oh. Five. <laughs> Is that right? Who knows? All right, let's get rid of the print statements, all of the print statements. Okay, and let's try the real input. 407. Should we try it? Yay, that's the right answer. Okay, what does Clippy say? Clippy says, um, I don't use FB bottom. Oh, okay. If I don't use FB bottom, oh, I only needed that in order to uh, sort the B-tree set. And still give us 407? It does. Okay. Git status. Git add. Git commit. Dash M. 2023, day 22, part one. All right, on to part two. What's the worst that could happen to us? Disintegrating bricks one at a time isn't going to be fast enough. While it might sound dangerous, what you really need is a chain reaction. You need to figure out the best brick to disintegrate. 
For each brick, determine how many other bricks would fall if that brick were disintegrated. Using the same example as above, disintegrating brick A would cause all six other bricks to fall. Disintegrating brick F would cause only one other brick, G, to fall. Disintegrating any other brick would cause no other bricks to fall. So in this example, the sum of the number of other bricks that would fall as a result of disintegrating each brick is 7. For each brick, determine how many other bricks would fall if that brick were disintegrated. What is the sum of the number of all the bricks that would fall? Ooh, okay. So how would we do this? We need to figure out what brick a given brick is supporting. And we know from part one which bricks not to even care about, right? Right, every brick that's in the removable list can be removed without causing any other brick to fall. So we only have to look at the ones that are remo uh, aren't in the removable list, uh, which means we want to make removable a thing up here. Right, because we've calculated it for part one. Um, so. And what just blew up? Um, what was I looking at then? I thought I would. Oh, I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. That's just U sizes. All right. Yeah, four or seven. Okay. Uh, git commit dash am refactor for part two. Um, we also probably want to know all of the information we just calculated. <laughs> Everything. Um, we have this ground information. So maybe this also needs to go in. Um, the global oh that's what i was looking at the b tree set that's why okay so yeah let's put that up here ground let's see if this that helps us figure out i think for you size Look for ground change it self ground self ground Self ground. Okay. Still four or seven. Good. Hmm. So in part two, we'll loop over all of the removable ones, non removable ones. So we can say for brick, for index in zero dot dot self bricks len if. Self removable contains index continue. All right, and we're almost done. All we have to do is fill in this little bit over here. <laughs> um, in order to determine if a brick will fall, we know at least one brick will fall, right? Because we we got here. Can we look at the removable list and work our way? Oh, we need to know what we're supporting, right? Which which bricks are above us that we're supporting? And since we're, we know that the brick immediately above us is going to fall, and what are we doing? Oh, we're looking for the sum of all of them. Okay. All right, I'm 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 just distracting myself now. I got forty minutes to do this. 
Um, we start with the brick that we're on, brick of index, and then we need to be able to look above and say, okay, for this brick, what is it supporting? And then we keep working our way up to say, I guess we could just do like a, a BFS all the way up um, and keep checking to see if, are we supporting, are we the sole support of a brick? And if we are the sole support of a brick, then add it to the list of, of bricks that would fall if we were removed. I think, I think that's what we need to do. Um, let's try it and see. Um, so we know here we might have to store more the more information. Maybe the ground isn't interesting, but maybe if we just created a list of X supports Y, we can do that while we're going through here, right? I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, we'll call this. I don't know what to call it. Mizzard says a brick could support two bricks above, of which both have to fall for the third layer to fall. Right. If brick A. Um, yeah, in, in the in the test example, right. Brick A is supporting two. So if we remove this one, we can look to see, say this, we know this one is not removable based on part one. So we're going to consider it for part two and say, if we remove this one, put on the list of all the bricks we, that are going to fall, every one it's supporting. And then if it's, and then we do the same thing for this one, if this is a removable one, oh, right. We have to consider the fact that both of them are getting removed and that's going to remove the support for these guys. Ah, I can't just walk my way up the, the tree here. Let's look at it from like a, a, a graph point of view. Let's where's my little mini graph here for each node we would have to walk back to see is that node in its support structure. We have to look at D. D is supported by A ultimately, right? If we walk our way backwards, B is supported by A. So that means for every node we're considering, we have to look at all of the nodes after it in the graph and see if we could reach, can we reach D from A? If so, then it will fall. Um, B we know can be removed from part one, so we wouldn't even have to consider that one. D we know can be removed, because that won't cause any other bricks to fall. If F is removed, it'll cause G to fall, because it's the only support. So I think we just need a way to walk backwards then and say, okay, from D, can we walk back to the node that's being removed or the block that's the brick that's being removed? But that means, do I need to dike through this to find the shortest path? Otherwise it's gonna take the search is going to take forever. Or can we cheat and build up every support for everything everywhere while we're doing part one? Right, we can say that B is being supported by A and when D says, oh, it's being supported by B, it just gets B's set of supports and adds it to itself. Right, D is supported by B and everything B gets supported by.
Wizard says, I currently have an OVA and squared solution. Yeah, that's what I'm, um, we'll see. Let, let, let's see if I can store that information um, here. As we find each brick that supports us, we can add it to the list of plus all of its supports. I don't want to change brick because that would mean changing all my tests. Well, I mean, I can bite the bullet and change it, right? It'd be nice if there were a way to refactor. Right. Um, refactor a struct such that it could fill in the default thing for you and all of your tests. That would be a nice, um, that would be a nice code action. Okay, the tests still run and they pass. Um, so now, it's a hash set, so we want to um, we want to say that our current brick, the falling brick, is now supported by the one we just collided with, plus all of its So can we say this self bricks FB index supported by? GB index, oh, insert GB index plus self bricks FB index, oops, supported by extend bricks <laughs> GB index supported by iter. Uh oh. Oh, self bricks. Doesn't like that. Multiple borrow, immutable borrow occurs here. Oh. Okay. Supports. Let supports equal. Um, supported by clone. And then extend by supports. Ooh. Redmonk says, oh no, the bar checker is stepping in. Yeah, well, at least this one was an easy one to fix. Um, and I don't know, let's see if this actually even tells us the information we're looking for. Um, keep doing that going the wrong direction. Um, let's print out at the end of part one, print out the bricks. Okay, brick A is not supported by anything. That's true. Brick B is supported by zero. Brick C is supported by zero. Brick well, the next one, supported by 2, 1, and 0. Is that true? Okay, I can't read this uh, for B in self bricks. It's saying that A, B, C, D, D is supported by A, B, and C. Is that right? Oh, that's true, yeah. D is supported by B, A, B, and C, yeah. And same with this guy. And this guy is supported by all these guys. 
and this is supported by all these guys. But we don't need to care about the ones that it, um, can be disintegrated, right? Because we're not even going to consider those. Okay, so maybe this is sufficient information. I don't know if this is going to be too much RAM usage. But now what we can do is loop over all of the bricks and see if this index is in the brick. And if so, we'll just add one to the, the total. So here's the O of n squared solution, right? Um, this might be similar to, to Mizzard's, I don't know, for consider in zero dot dot self. Oh, we can say brick in self bricks if brick no yeah brick supported by contains index because it never contains itself right so i don't have to worry about that condition yeah but that's easy enough to check for brick supported by contains index then total plus equals one and maybe we can reduce this to a fold or something seven is seven correct seven seven is correct all right let's get rid of um these lines and run it on the real input And we get 79,143. Ah, my answer is too high. All right, what did I do wrong? If it's removable, then removing it is not going to add anything to our list of falling bricks. We can look at all the all the bricks that exist. If the brick that we're looking at has in one of its ancestors the index that we're considering, then it's going to fall if that brick is be, is removed. So the only thing is maybe this is wrong, but it looked right from the test input point of view, right? Let's take a look at it again. I shouldn't have commented it out. I shouldn't have deleted it. Um, and then switch back the uh, the test input. Um, it's too high. Maybe I should stop once I find it. Because we know it's going to fall. Mizzou says the brick will only fall if all of its supporters are falling. If any are not falling, it will not fall. Right. But if that's why I was going back to here, if I remove A, D ultimate ancestor is going to be A. And so D has to fall if A is being removed. If B is removed, it's not going to fall. And we're not even going to check because B is not on the list of removable items. We're not even going to check B or C. We're not going to check D or E. We're not going to check F. We're only going to check G. Yeah, I don't know if doing a break here is going to make a difference. Oh, that broke that. Oh, right. We're, we're trying to count up all the bricks that could fall as a result of this falling. Okay. Code Monk says index being unsupported by list is not enough. All the support E's that a candidate must fall for that brick to fall. Yes, yeah, so I think you're restating what Mizzard said, and I'm and I'm just I'm I'm just trying to um, understand how I'm going to achieve that effect. Um, let me let me let me see if I can put together an example of what that would look like. Um, we need a situation where we can remove A. Let's say A is supporting B and C and D. Or maybe, you know, 
Hmm. I don't. I guess I don't because I can't come up with a, a solution right now or a puzzle problem. Okay, maybe this is it. We have a couple here, and then we have B and C supporting you know G and or not G H and I. If G is removed, even though G is an ancestor of C, and I have B, let's let's do it so I have the uh, the X in here. B and C are both supporting H and I, right? So if I remove A, I is not going to fall, even if B falls, because C is still supporting it. All right, so it's not sufficient, like, like Misery and Code Monk saying, it's not sufficient to just check the ancestors and see. We have to make sure that all of its predecessors are going to fall as a result. So all of its predecessors have to have an ancestor of the brick being removed. And then so on and so on and so on. So we have to create a work queue then, right? Of all of the supportees. Self bricks. Oh, okay, let's do it this way. Um, right, so if it contains that, and we can say self bricks, uh, we can say brick dot supported by, come on, why is that completing? Iter collect vec. Right? And then stack should be a stack of vec of vec of u size or references to u size, fine. Actually, you could just copy them. Right? Okay. Wait, it shouldn't be a vec of vec of u size. It should it should just be this. There. So these are all of its supports, and all of them have to fall. Yeah, this is turning into a BFS, isn't it? Um, while let some B equal stack pop. What do we do here? We have to look at all of its ancestors and see if it's in index. And all of them have to be an index, and all of its have to be an index. Um, I guess we could do it recursively. Yeah. Um, somebody in, in chat mentioned doing a recursive solution, so this might be this might be the way we can do this. We can say um, will fall self uh, index u size. And it will fall if all of its descendants will fall. If um, so, removing u size in index u size. Uh, count fall right. So if removing is equal to index, if we've fallen all the way back, then it's return zero. Um, if otherwise we're going to add up. No, no, I think it's. Yeah. In the fall and bool. And if we're moving index, we'll just say true. And then we'll bubble our way up. Um, we can say for all of its antecedents for I in self bricks index supported by iter. We're going to see if all of its can be removed. I don't know why this is not. Something's confusing me here. 
Um, if not, self will fall. Um, I index. Oh no, we're removing. Then return false. Otherwise, return true. Okay, and then up here we can say for each brick we want to consider if it will fall if we if it's removed. Right? For brick in self bricks, if self will fall, removing brick at index. Oh, and we're doing the index of the brick that it's falling. Ah, brick ID. Removing that one, uh, brick ID. Then total plus equals one. Let's see if this is closer to the real thing. Um, dereference? Oh, is this a... Now it says 14. <laughs> Oops. That's interesting. Why? Um, let's go here and take a look. Printlin. Uh, index. If index is removed, brick ID will fall. If zero is removed, zero will fall. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so we have to skip those. If index is not equal to brick ID. And it got us down to 12. If zero is removed, one will fall. That's true. Two, three, four, five, six. If five is removed, zero, zero will fall. Hello, Mahad. Okay. Good luck with, uh, good luck with part ones and two parts one and two. Um, this all makes sense, right? Because zero is in the antecedent of everything. If five is removed, We only want to look at things that are, are above it. Wizard said, I had to check if brick did not have any supporters laying on the ground. It would not fall. Yeah, five should only be seeing that six will fall, not anything below it. So if, if five is removed, right? If we're removing five, we look at all of five's antecedents and see is six in there. Oh, do I have, I have something backwards here. We're looking at brick ID, brick ID zero. Brick ID zero doesn't have any, oh, no, that's right. We're, we're looking at what we're falling back to. Um, yeah, if we if we end up back at where uh, at the removing thing, it's possible, right? We also have to look to see what we're what's supporting us. Five. Zero will fall. So we're passing in five and zero. We come up here. This removing is not equal to index. So now we're going to look in zero and see what it's supported by. And it has nothing in here. Oh, okay. And then it's falling. So it's falling down here to true, saying, yes, it's going to, it's going to cause this to fall. But we never found this guy.
We just assume that we looped through a bunch of things. Kapitschka, thank you for the follow. Um, right, and then so this recursively checks behind us, right? From zero. And there shouldn't be any. Right, so that's empty. So it shouldn't be, we shouldn't end up having a true here. We actually need to get will fall to return a true at least once. Now let's see, let's assume we're going to do one. All right, so we'll work our way through here. Tuki, Tuki, thank you for the follow. Um, if we're considering five, removing five, and we're looking at one, it's moving is not equal to index. We look at one supports, which is zero. Zero will, oh, right. So zero will not fall, right, if, if five is removed. But I'm doing this, this true here at the end. So this true has to be changed. Um, if we loop through all of them and all of them said they would fall. Uh, um, so this true can't be this. It has to check, right? If we actually have to find the index eventually in our, in our search, because if we don't find the index that we're looking for, we don't find five anywhere in this thing, then... Oh, okay. So maybe this returning true is only true if five is in there. Self bricks index supported by contains removing. Oh, no, that doesn't make any sense because removing is equal to index. Maybe that's the last one. No, not quite. All right. Because if six. Oh, we're, we're checking the wrong ones. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but we're not checking five. Um, So obviously that not great. Five versus six. Six should fall if five. Okay, so let's let's think about that one. Um, six and five come in here. They're not equal. We're going to loop through all of the bricks. Oh, see, I'm I'm not just doing the ones that are supporting. I'm doing all of the ones, not the immediate supports. Okay. So that's why we'll, we'll switch that around so we only can keep track of the immediate supports. Where is that code? Yeah, I'm doing this part here. So if we change this, right, and now we need to change this part here. And I had this as true before. And that's still 12. Okay. But now we can check to see if we remove five, then six will fall. So that's correct. Um, the problem is five still thinks that it will fall if zero, if zero thinks it'll fall if five is removed. And we, we're never getting back to that point where um, So that's going to be false. Bricks index supported. This is going to be empty, and so we end up with true. So what do what do we need to determine? In the middle, we need to say, you know, if, is two going to fall, and is one going to fall? And when those get removed, there. Mizzou says, if supported by is empty, it's laying on the ground and will never fall. 
that's a good point. But will that? So we could just say that, right? Self bricks index supported by is empty. Yeah, that's it. All right. That was something you were trying to hint to me before, Mizzard, and I just it just wasn't clicking for me. All right, we can try that. All right, I should just delete the print lines instead of doing all this massive stuff. Um, where is this? Next print line, uh, we can just comment that one out. I'm getting ready to run the real input now that the test input is giving me the right answer again. All right, and then lines. It's not a fast answer. Uh, it does give me a smaller number, which is a good sign because the, my previous answer was too high and was 73,000 or something. Yay, that's the right answer. All right, and just in time too. It's 8.56, I gotta go.